going on guys uh, i wanted to make a video actually uh specifically for my uncle john who had left a comment uh saying that he'd like me to show him how to do kydex one of these days well he lives a little bit far from me uh down in kentucky probably about a six six and a half hour drive at least uh, from my house and uh, i figured the next best thing would be fire up the camera and uh, show him how i do it via video here so uh, i've got a piece of kydex uh, cooking up in the toaster oven there. Uh, my oven set at about 325 on the dial. Uh, it actually runs a little cooler than that. Uh, probably looking at 250 to 275 actual temperature. Uh, I keep a uh, little oven thermometer in there just to know exactly where it's at. And uh, as soon as I see that Kydex start to curl up, I know it's getting close to being ready. So I'm going to change my camera angle here to my Kydex press. And this normally needs to happen relatively quickly. Uh, it starts cooling off immediately. And the hotter you are, the sooner you take it out of the oven, uh, the more formable the Kydex is going to be and the more definition you're going to get on whatever you're forming it around. So... When you take it out, uh, you almost want like a wet leather consistency, uh, just real nice and flexible. Uh, you know, I like to feel around for any potential hot spots or cold spots. Uh, sometimes if you don't leave it in long enough, you'll actually be able to feel where it's already started hardening up. Uh, and since I was kind of just playing with it there, I'm going to stick it back in just for a little bit. And uh, I like to wear gloves. Uh, you know, like I said, that is set to close to 300 degrees. Uh, I don't care how manly anybody's hands are, that gets pretty uncomfortable on bare skin. Uh, especially when you're uh, really trying to squeeze it. You know, it seems like the harder you squeeze something that's hot or cold, you know, the more that heat transfers and uh, burns you pretty good. And you've got to get kind of a tight squeeze just before your press goes down on it, uh, as that helps to give you a little bit better fit as well. And I'll show that here in a moment. But uh, this is what we're going to be forming around. Change my camera angle there a little bit. Uh, I like to have whatever I'm going to be pressing Kydex around, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle of my press here. So that in kind of a couple quick motions, I can wrap my Kydex, slide my press down, and then stick it in the vise. Now, I'm doing a taco-style sheath, uh, if you're doing more of a pancake style, as they call it, uh, where it's two halves that have eyelets all the way around or rivets. Uh, it's a little bit of a different process. Uh, tacos, you got to wrap around rather than just lay it on one hot piece and another hot piece on top of that, uh, kind of a sandwich. Uh, this way, you've actually got to set it down and then manually wrap it before you set your press. So... Uh, we're good here. So you quickly take it out, clamp it down with your piece a little bit, get a nice tight wrap. And it is a little bit tricky at first. You know, you end up kind of letting things go too soon or you don't you know, hold everything in place just right. Uh, and then your sheath ends up crooked when you take it out. Uh, I think I'm good there though. You want to clamp down pretty tight. Uh, you almost can't go too tight, uh, especially if you have a thicker press foam. Uh, that's definitely going to help you. And I recommend at least uh, one inch thick foam. Uh, you go any thinner than that, then the harder you press it, you'll actually bottom out your foam and you start getting like flat spots or uh, kind of some hard looking spots in your sheaths. Uh, the thicker the foam, probably the better to an extent, uh, you know, maybe an inch, inch and a half, give or take. Uh, I like the one inch PVC foam. Uh, it's probably one of the better uh, types of foam you can use. Uh, it kind of has a little bit of a memory uh, but it's still uh, kind of rigid enough uh, to give you good definition. 
you know, if the foam's too soft, it's really not going to work. If it's too hard, it's not going to work. Uh, PVC foam is usually right there in the middle. Uh, I get mine from usaknifemaker.com. Uh, this is actually the first couple pieces I ever bought. Uh, I bought two 12 by 12 chunks of it or like a 12 by 24 piece that I cut in half. Uh, for most things, you can honestly get away with smaller than that, maybe a 6 by 12 piece on either side. Uh, then I've just got it sandwiched between some three quarter inch plywood with a hinge uh, just to help hold everything together. Uh, I've also seen where guys make their own presses by taking like a woodworking vise and just gluing the foam into, into the insides of the plates, like a quick release vise, uh, you know, station it vertically, like on your bench, put your knife in, slam it down and tighten it up. Uh, for this, I've used uh, C-clamps before, you know, just pinch it shut, put a C-clamp on it. Uh, lately, I've been using my bench vise uh, to clamp it. Uh, Knifekits.com has a Kydex press uh, you can make pretty easily, uh, which is like a notched steel plate with a chain uh, that you can adjust tension on. Uh, there's any number of ideas. Uh, this is about the low lowest tech way uh, I can think of and uh, normally get pretty decent results but uh, at any rate once you have it in the foam you do want to let it cool uh, to pretty close to room temperature uh, if you take it out too soon you're going to lose your form or it's going to start bending or warping on you a little bit uh, you can't really leave it in too long uh, you do want to make sure that you leave it in for at least three or four minutes, uh, if not longer, depending on how hot you got everything. Now, uh, I do already have one pressed. That's ready to go and uh, start drilling and shaping. You can see the definition of that thin blade there pretty readily. And uh, now what I'm going to do, take the gloves off. Uh, we're going to mark for our holes that we're going to drill for our eyelet. And uh, you can use a pencil. I like a Sharpie. Uh, you really don't even need to mark them if you don't want to. Uh, just make sure you're on the right spot. <clears throat> and uh, for eyelets, you don't want to get too close. Uh, if you get too close to your blade or what you're making the sheath for, uh, then that compression of the material actually makes it really hard to pull your knife back out. Uh, so you want to give it a pretty good gap. Uh, I'd say of at least a quarter inch from the edge of the eyelet. Uh, I think maybe air on the side of farther than closer uh, if you have the option. And I'm not sure how well that'll show up, but I've got one here. Uh, I like to stay away from like the whitest part, you know, where it's gonna kind of be the hardest part to push into the sheath. Uh, that's where you want the most flexibility in your sheath. So make sure you don't put an eyelet right there. It'll almost lock your sheath to where once the knife goes in, it'll never want to come out again. So, you know, definitely make sure that like towards the end of a handle, for instance, or maybe where something flares out, or if you've got like a guard or a tang that's kind of poking out. Uh, if that's got to like overcome the kydex in any way, uh, or in other words, if it's got to spread the kydex out to get past it, uh, you want to leave your eyelets farther away from points like that uh, so that you do have, uh, for instance, your flexibility. You know, you can see it's pretty hard to open so just keep that in mind if I got an eyelet there I wouldn't be able to open that at all and if your kydex doesn't open you're not going to get your knife in or if your knife does go in you're not going to get it out and you're just going to be frustrated so again kind of err on the side of farther away from both the edges or any wide spots uh, on your knife handles or blade tangs and things like that so uh, I've got some rough holes here Uh, we'll leave the oven on. I'll do a few more tonight. Uh, let's see if I can trip over something. Uh, 
Now there's generally two sizes of eyelets, 3 16 and 1 quarter diameter. I like the 3 16 for these. So I'm actually going to take a 1364 strobe bit. Uh, you can use a 3 16 uh, they work fine as well. They're, they're just a little bit on the tight side. And if we can make something just a little bit easier, why not, right? So, 1364. Uh, Brad Point, uh, like wood drills, are really nice for this. Uh, just a regular twist drill works just fine, too. Uh, sometimes I do also like to, uh, you know, center punch my holes because the Kydex is a little on the slick side so if your bit's a little dull it'll tend to skate around on you so automatic center punch or a little all uh, works just fine and uh, we're going to drill the holes now So you'll notice I was having a little trouble keeping it flint on my vise there. Uh, these little one, two, three blocks are some kind of little standoff, even a block of wood, uh, to get it up because it's not a flat parallel surface. Uh, that just really makes a difference in kind of getting access to those corner positions, you know, without angling your piece, keeps your hole square. And uh, you can see how I did that. Uh, you do want to be careful when you're going through. Sometimes you get a burr on the inside. So just make sure, feel in there, and clean them out if you need to. Otherwise, when you press your eyelet, uh, you'll get a little gap in your sandwich there. So uh, there's the holes. Uh, just real quick and simple like that. Uh, sharp drill bit. Makes a very quick job. Way too much junk in here. And uh, here's my Arbor Press. Now you have a couple options when it comes to eyelets. Uh, I've seen guys use rivets and things like that before too. Uh, eyelets work really well. And you can get little dies that go on like a bench vise or that you use a hammer with. I've never had luck with those. Uh, they're a lot harder to use. Uh, you can get these from knifekits.com or USA Knife Maker. I think they want like $30 to $35 a set. Uh, worth every penny, uh, in my opinion. So you've got a male side and a female side, which I've actually got flipped around for another job here. Uh, I've modified this arbor press. I've drilled a hole in the end of the arbor to take that uh, top die. And I've just got a little thumb screw there to hold it. Uh, and then this is lined up. Uh, if you need some tips and tricks on making one of these, uh, I can kind of walk you through it. But uh, it's a nice tool to have. I'll just say that. <clears throat> and then I've got these uh, also from knifekits.com. These eyelets. They've probably got the best price on them for quality eyelets. Uh, not all eyelets are created equal. Some of them don't form worth a crap. And uh, you want them specific to the thickness of your Kydex. Too long and they tend to split. Too short and you don't get a good flare on them. Uh, so there'll be like a thickness range when you go to order them. Uh, this is 80 thousandths Kydex. And uh, these are 80 thousandths eyelets. So... Uh, Drop them in your hole, top down, go over the male side. And sometimes I like to put a little bit of 3-in-1 oil or some kind of silicon spray on there just uh, to help form it a little easier. Uh, I should be good on this one though. So you bring everything snug, 
And then you kind of want to jerk it like a real fast setting action. And that will give you a much cleaner set. Uh, if you go too slow, that can also tend to uh, deform it or uh, split your eyelet. So, uh, we're actually going to take the knife out because it gets a lot harder until I cut and grind this away to how I want it. Uh, it'll be much harder to get the knife in and out, even though I uh, gave that space like I mentioned. So, uh, number two, pop it, check for splits, everything looks good. These eyelets form really nicely. Pop it, and just like that, you're done. Uh, so, yeah, you spend a little money on these little arbor presses, uh, then you've got to drill for the dies. Uh, line up the holes and all that, but it's worth every penny, especially if you're going to be doing this every once in a while. So uh, now I've got my eyelets pressed, and right now it's a little clunky uh, to try to set this in there. It's a little tighter. You know, this isn't going to want to spread apart as easily. Uh, so what I need to do, I actually have to reduce the material here. Uh, as well as kind of shape my final sheath. I want to flush up these edges. So uh, that will be kind of the next little step here through the obstacle course. This is my first belt grinder I ever built. Uh, it's a no weld grinder sander. Uh, I've got a custom platen that I made which I normally wouldn't use for this kind of work. It's got a V-belt on it, or a micro V-belt uh, that rides on these wheels. It just creates a soft backing as it goes around against this belt. Uh, it's not really ideal for this, but I've got it set up, so we'll use it. Again, just flushing up the edges, I'm going to round over the corners. Uh, and then uh, we'll remove a little bit of material here for like a finger notch and uh, shape the back of it a little bit. And uh, you actually want to use a coarse belt, like at least a 120. Uh, any finer than that, it's going to want to melt your plastic and not really cut it. So I got a 120 in here, 80 or 60 is probably even better. And then if you want maybe a little polish, you can go to a higher grit after. Uh, but for main material removal, uh, start with at least a good fresh 120. Uh, this is actually a little dull. Just kind of eyeballing this. You know what? Actually, I'm going to put a little quartz belt on here. Uh, this is a sixty grit. which is maybe a little coarser than I would normally even use on especially something this small. But this isn't really cutting like I like, so.
two inch idle wheel actually makes a really good uh, starting point for your finger notch. And you want to get like just right to the edge of your handle. The less material you have there, actually the nicer your knife will generally fit. Uh, start grinding till it just starts to open up there. And we'll kind of do the same from the back side. round over that's kind of a good starting spot now you're gonna have a couple little fuzzies you could just take a utility knife which surprise uh, <laughs> happen to have here just cut the little strings and burrs off you know even just running it like a scraper. We'll just have a couple of raised burrs where that plastic kind of starts to want to melt. And kind of go around uh, the outside, knock any burrs off. Uh, you can actually kind of burnish it with a piece of fine grit paper. Uh, if you've got a bench top buffer or like a buffing wheel. You can run around it gives it a nice shiny edge or burnish uh, you can even use like i said a higher grip belt but now you want to check your fit so get a nice pop and uh, it actually comes out pretty easily and sometimes it's just a real fine line uh, between a uh, super tight fit and even a super loose fit depending on your geometry and which parts you're grabbing uh, that I like it's pretty smooth you still got that pop you know no wiggle at all nice and solid uh, and for me at least for something like this you know if I can pull it out with two fingers that's ideal and your sheath will break in just a little bit as well uh, with use, uh, especially uh, if you leave it like on the dashboard of a hot car, <laughs> it'll loosen up even more. Uh, so if it starts off a little tight, that's fine too. Uh, but you know, ideally you should be able to kind of push it off with your thumb or kind of pull it out with uh, two fingers. That's pretty dang good sheath there. Uh, so a nice definition. Again, a nice finger clearance. You know, so I can naturally kind of grab this. Uh, you know, you want to keep ergonomics in mind uh, to an extent, as well as aesthetics. Uh, but that's pretty much what I'm going for. So really not much to it. Uh, you know, the Kydex foam... For the press will cost you a little bit the arbor press and the die flaring or the eyelet flaring dies uh, that'll cost you a little bit uh, especially if you do uh, two sizes i've got quarter inch and three sixteenths uh, and i've actually got a couple of different sets uh, these are from knife kits they actually work pretty nicely uh, these are from USA knife maker I think these are like 30 to 35 these are like 45 uh, both of them work just fine and uh, you know if need be you could even put this in a bench vise you don't need the arbor press but uh, that just makes it a lot smoother it gives you much more consistent results so uh, I'm trying to think what else 
Uh, and there's other accessories like tech locks, uh, belt clips you can put on with like Chicago screws. Uh, they're called Chicago style screws or uh, like post screws. Uh, I think I've seen them called. Uh, normally those require the quarter inch eyelets uh, if you want to do that. I think there's smaller hardware kits you can get that might fit on the 3 sixteenths. But normally if I'm using a belt clip or any kind of a fastening screw or bolt, uh, I upgrade to the quarter inch. Uh, 3 sixteenths is good for paracord, uh, ball chain, things like that to go through. Uh, zip ties, uh, depending on how you want to mount something. Uh, it's nice to have both options available though. Uh, like I said, uh, quality eyelets uh, are important. Uh, don't buy the super cheap ones like off eBay. You can get like a thousand of them for like 10 bucks or whatever. Uh, it's tempting, but the ones that are a little more expensive uh, work really well, like from knifekits.com. Uh, they're premium grade. Uh, it's not that expensive. USA Knife Maker sells one that's, you know, they claim to be the best. I've used them. They're not better than the knife kits, and they're quite a bit more uh, per 50 or 100. Uh, so I stick with knifekits.com uh, for dies and eyelets. Uh, you'll save a bit and they do as well or better. Uh, what else? Uh, Kydex versus Bolteron. Uh, they're about the same. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. Uh, you know, Bolteron or Conceal X, you might get a little bit of a tighter form, but part of that's technique as well. Uh, so I would take either one, find the one you can get for the cheapest. Uh, definitely go with PVC foam. It's pricey, but worth it. Uh, I'm sure I've repeated that about 10 times already. And, uh, yeah, as far as heating, you can use a griddle plate. You can use a torch uh, or a heat gun. Uh, a torch is maybe a little dicey. <laughs> I probably wouldn't recommend that uh, unless you're real controlled with it. Uh, but a heat gun works, a griddle plate, a hot plate. Um, a little toaster oven works really well, or even a kitchen oven. And, uh, yeah, just get nice, hard, tight presses on them. Uh, you know, more pressure is better than less pressure. And, uh, generally a little bit more heat and thickness of Kydex is a little better than, uh, not enough heat or too thin a Kydex. So, uh, start with there. If you have any questions, uh, Maybe you got my phone number, uh, but you can leave a message or, you know, have me call you. And uh, I think that's all I'm going to say about that. Well, let me show you one more thing. If you've got a bench top buffer or buffing wheel in your drill press, this is kind of the rough sanded finish couple of quick swipes here gives it kind of a real nice burnished look just want to kind of roll it and uh, give it it kind of rounds it over it almost melts it just kind of roll it a little bit as you're going up and down And uh, kind of gives you like a solid uh, burnished surface there. I'm going to touch that up a little bit more. Takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but it's a nice little finishing touch. Not everybody does.
So uh, there we go. Nice little uh, neck knife sheath. From uh, center up there. There we go. Oh, and uh, one more thing I will mention. Uh, if you're putting in knife blades, <clears throat> especially ones you've spent a lot of time like hand rubbing a finish on, any little bit of grit from your sanding belt or maybe even your bandsaw when you're cutting this, this gets like a static charge to it and it'll attract any little bit of dust or grit or dirt and stick in here. Then when you stick your knife in there, that uh, knife will rub right into it and you'll start pulling out your blade and finding scratches on it. Uh, best way to prevent that, for one, demagnetize your knife blades uh, so any metal or, you know, dust or grit uh, doesn't get attracted to the knife. Uh, maybe spray a little bit of static cling guard or something on it, uh, on the material, wipe it down real good, uh, wash it out with soap and water, dry it real nice. Uh, kind of try to get rid of any of that static cling uh, that might be an issue and just make sure you're not cross contaminating uh, if you're shaping it on a belt sander uh, make sure your grit's not funneling into the sheath you know blow it out uh, normally i like to uh, kind of tap it out on a hard bench or something blow it out with a compressed air gun and uh, you know just kind of wipe it out with my fingers or a paper towel you know, and uh, get it as clean as I can because it will find that one little piece of grit that will ruin your finish. And it seems like when you put your knife in there, it like embeds the grit into the sheath. So it's like a perpetual sanding stick. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, just keep it clean, blow it out, wash it out, and uh, you should be good to go. But uh, there's a finished shop knife for somebody. And uh, I should have another uh, sheath ready to drill and shape over there in the vise already. So uh, there you go, Uncle John. Uh, I hope that helps for you. And uh, if I can do anything else or tell you any more secrets, uh, let me know. Have a good one.